Hello and welcome to Lawrence Plays Factorio Space Exploration and Crastorio 2 where I have once again been playing with the Vulcanite. Let's step back a little bit though before we have it, before we uh, look into exactly what's going on over here. So initially I set up, I, I loaded up the spaceship over here in Norvis orbit in order to go off on yet another expedition out to the Vulcanite planning. And I spent some time messing around with the design for a, a Vulcanite processing system. Because back on Agnea we had this system from, that I set up ages ago, so it's a little bit out of date. We are using tier 3 productivity modules in here which is quite good, but we're, using rel we're only using tier 2 um, speed modules and the relatively small beacons. and. To be honest, I, I don't know, I feel like, give the, um, given the input levels, it, it, it just doesn't feel like it's running quite as quickly and as smoothly as I feel it should. So I thought it was time to, uh, to tweak the designs a little bit. And so that's why I uh, re rebuilt the design then loaded up on uh, with all of the equipment I was going to need to make the new one. In fact, let's have a bit of a look at the new one while, while, while we're here. So I've put in an additional station up here, so the trains will come along, drop off the, the Vulcanite ore here, where it gets very, very similarly to the previous setup. It's fed into the pulverizers along the top here, and then through some centrifuges. And these are this is exactly the same as the system over here, um, for the same sort of machine, same sort of modules. I've just rearranged things a little bit, and because I've managed to put in one beacon in the middle here, and that is actually covering all of the machines here, okay, except the one down here that's melting the ice, ice into water, but that doesn't need the extra speed. Um, because, because I'm using exactly the same machines, we're not really gaining any product productivity from this, which is a bit of a shame, because um, usually when we do an, one of these big upgrades, we're able to upgrade to a better type of machine, like these um, the, the better class of furnace here, that allows you to put more uh, more modules in. However, in this case, it's the same. It's the same pulverizers. It's the same centrifuges. I have been able to compress the, de the design a little bit, though, because in the old design, there had to be enough space to put the beacons in, where they were going to be able to reach the centrifuges. Whereas with the wide area beacons, they cover a much larger area. So I've been able to put it in the middle here, and it's been able to get all of these all of these centrifuges and the pulverizers at the top. So that's much much better. And that means I've saved a bit of space by condensing this whole thing upwards a bit. And in theory, I designed this with the intention that it was going to be able to take two solid belts of input, which it currently is. All, as you can see, that's we've got just enough pulverizers here, and then they're feeding it out onto the two belts along here that get, drops into the chest. So with the previous design, we needed to make sure that we didn't run out of either, pul either uh, the, the crushed or the enriched, because both of these are being fed down from this warehouse down to be uh, to be cooked over down here, and the sulfur is also being passed through it and, and passed on. Whereas with the new design, instead of doing that, I've taken a leaf out of I think this was Tristan's design in the um, when we did the vol flavors of Vulcanite a little while ago, and so I've got the, the belt flowing past all of the centrifuges and then into the um, into the furnace at the end, and the same with the one that carries the enriched. And so this means that instead of having the um, Instead of having it fed back into the warehouse at the beginning and then making sure that the belts are all full in the right sort of proportions, we can just make sure that any excess that comes through makes it all the way around to the furnace and is therefore going to be cooked up. Now it does seem to be a little bit bursty, which is a bit odd because we've got this big gap on the um, on the belt here, whereas before I'm sure we had quite a lot more going through. So even with the even with the redesign, it's a bit oh, it's because we've run out of sulfur. That's why. So that's an, that's another problem that we're going to need to sort out. But yes, having it feed the uh, the re ingredients through all the way around through the processing system and then into the final oven at the end of it, make sure that these machines can take whatever they need in order to keep running, and then the excess will be passed through into the, into the furnace to be cooked into the uh, in, in, into the vulcanite blocks. And so that was until we ran out of sulfur, that was working really nicely. The extra bit that I forgot about when I was designing it is that this machine also produces steam. So down here we've got a chemical plant that is taking the steam in and turning it back into water. Now you may ask, why are you not using a, 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 a turbine for this to generate some extra electricity? Well, that is because up in uh, orbit around this planet, I've put down another of these sort of another of these sort of standard top side station things. This is more or less copied from Talos, although with with a few tweaks and improvements. And so there's a chunk of solar power available here that's hooked up to the elevator. That means if we look at the power network here you can see that basically all of the power we're using is being produced by these solar panels and okay there's some flats there's some normal solar panels down on the planet which are a little bit unnecessary but we've got them there anyway and there are some turbines down there because we did have a nuclear plant down there before because there's no there's no water on this planet so using the uh, the pre normal method of the free power would not have worked so I built a nuclear plant instead which does use some water but it uses a lot less of it but that has now gone completely to sleep because nuclear is a higher priority and so that means if I did try to put to put the uh, the steam through a turbine it just wouldn't get used it would build up and we won't we aren't using any of the turbines 
So unless we start to run short of power, we'd never use it, and therefore it, 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 that wouldn't work. So I ended up... Ha it was a choice between either venting it, which I didn't want to do, because that's a huge waste of water when you have to ship it in as ice, or possibly... To, or then... Uh, um, I can't remember whether I thought of it or somebody in the, in the comment section pointed it out, but either way, you can use a chemical plant to turn the steam back into water, which is convenient. So up here, we've got basically the same system that you've seen before. We've got a train that goes up and down the um, the elevator, bringing, miscellate, bringing all of the stuff that we want to get rid of, and then goes back down again. Uh, and in theory, this train is going to also be bringing in enough sulphur and ice to keep the whole system running. Now, it turns out it's not. The amount of sulphur we're requesting is woefully inadequate, so... We're going to have to ask the uh, the spaceship to bring out a lot more of it. And this is worrying me a bit, actually. I need to do the numbers around this and work out if it's actually realistically possible to have a spaceship bring over enough enough sulphur in order to make all of the vulcanite that we're going to need here. And I'm going to need to do the same for Talos, for the beryllium production, because it just seems like we're bringing in huge quantities of it, and it's just not really enough. Now, one thing you might notice is that, yes, we do have some vulcanite in here. Let's sort, sort this. But we also have an awful lot of stone. Um... This spaceship is now basically is very nearly full, but nearly all of what's been brought in is is stone. If, if we have if we have a look at this, we you can see we've got okay we've got twenty thousand um, vulcanite and only sixteen thousand stone. So there is more vulcanite than there is stone, but um, the stone only stacks up to fifty. So we get almost four times as many stacks of uh, of, of stone as there is vulcanite. It also looks like the uh, circuitry hasn't been set up here in order to get the uh, the ship to depart because as you can see it's now well. This, this one isn't quite full, but the other two warehouses are completely full, as is shown by the fact there's stuff left in these ones. So we are going to need to find some way of uh, telling the ship to depart, but that's Mark's area, so we'll, uh, we'll leave that for him next time. But previously, he was looking at the stuff on the ship and, go and counting it up and going, ah oh, yes, we've got so so a certain amount of it, let's tell the ship to go. And I've just had a quick look around the circuitry on this ship, and I think it's just it just looks like it's not finished. Uh, so I think we need we need to uh, ask Mark about it a little bit and, and find out what's going on. However, it is also notable that Mark has redesigned these spaceships quite significantly, or at least he's redesigned the one that's come out out here. And you'll notice it's a different shape. So previously, you'll been used to seeing the one that we sent sent out to Talos, which looks like this. Uh, we've got here. We've got the. Um, the ship ready, getting getting ready to depart, and as you can see, it's sort of this blocky shape. And we've most importantly, we've used these underground belts to load stuff in and out. Now it's been decided that that is not a, not suitable because when the spaceship leaves, you lose anything that's in all of these underground belts across here, and that's kind of wasteful. And so. We've had a redesign for the Agnea spaceship where we're using these uh, superior inserters. And these are basically as fast, they're virtually as fast as using underground belts to load up the ship. They're incredible uh, as they pass back and forth like, like this. And so the idea of this is that instead of, well, as they are, instead of losing... Um, Instead of losing 30 or something items from all of the underground belts, we instead we'll lose one item from each inserter. And that's much less, that's far, far fewer, it's about a 30th in fact. Uh, and so that, that's much better. And I think there's a plan to improve this even further to say when this warehouse is virtually full to stop the inserters running and, and, and leave sort of, I don't know, two or three stacks worth of empty space in them. In which case these inserters will, will just straight up stop. And the other, the other nice thing about doing it with inserters is with, these are filter inserters and so we can program them. So down here we have a system where here we have, um, this, and this is a bit like the system we have for passing the stuff through the... Uh, the, through the space bus, where we have massive, massive negative numbers of things that we want to end up staying inside the spaceship. And then that's added to what we're seeing as the contents of the spaceship over here somewhere, and then passed up to all the filter inserters. So if there's anything in these chests that we want to unload here, things like the, the sulfur, the ice, the, um, the, the new batteries for the trains, the cables, then that will be passed out by the inserters. But once they have all of the uh, all the stuff we want has been taken out, we won't then carry on passing through all of the things we want to send over to Norbit. So this system should work really nicely, and we'll end up with the uh, the ship unloading much more, just almost as quickly, but much more neatly, and with, to be honest, with simpler um, circuitry and without needing a pass-through system. Because if you remember on Talos, there would be a little bit of overspill where you get a few things that weren't needed for that planet would spill out of the ship and go into the warehouses over here. So we had to end up passing them back around and feeding them back in on the input. So this system is much simpler and much more elegant. Um, it's just a shame it hasn't quite been finished yet. <laughs> and also that it's not bringing over enough, um, enough sulphur to, in order to make all the vulcanite. If we take a look at the recipe here, you can see where all the sulphur is going. Uh, so it takes one sulphur to make three additional enriched vulcanite out of the crushed vulcanite. You do also get a little bit of additional um, enriched vulcanite for free, in inverted commas, as part of the initial crushing process. But let's ignore that, because that is quite a, that's quite a small proportion. As you can see here, only 10% only comes out from that for every three crushed vulcanite. So I think we'll, we'll, we'll just ignore that for the time being. 
So we'll say that one sulfur goes to three enriched vulcanite, and then ten enriched vulcanite go to five vulcanite blocks. So it's two two enriched vulcanite per block. So each each one sulfur makes one and a half um, vulcanite blocks. So in that case, if we want to fill up this spaceship, that, and that's going to so be very, very problematic. If we want to fill up this spaceship with vulcanite, and we, we actually won't be completely filling it with vulcanite, because as you can see, there's a lot of other stuff here as well. But that means we're going to need two-thirds as much sulfur as, we, as we're shipping out with vulcanite. And the problem is, it only stacks up a quarter as high. So we're going to be shipping out, uh, if we ship out a full spaceship of, sul of sulfur, literally nothing but sulfur, then that's going to produce enough vulcanite to fill up three-eighths of a ship, and plus a little bit from the other, other bonuses. And then there'll be some stone and some rare metals and so on coming through as well. But basically, that's not remotely enough. So I think we might have to abandon the idea of bringing sulphur over from Norvis in order to produce the vulcanite and just stick with producing it down on, on the planet, unless we come up with some very, very clever way to do it. And sulphur is made from petroleum gas. It takes 15 petroleum gas to make one sulphur, which means it takes uh, 10 petroleum gas to make, uh, to make one vulcanite. We could potentially replace one of the warehouses on the ship with a huge storage tank, which holds 200,000. So that would mean we'd make 20. We'd be able to make 20,000 uh, vulcanite out of that, which is 100 stacks. So that's not remotely enough to fill the other two warehouses that'll be on here. So this does honestly seem to be an insurmountable problem with with this with this system. We either bring out a spaceship full of sulfur and then fly back once it's run out. Once the system down on the planet has run out of sulfur. Or we produce the sulfur on the carry on producing the sulfur on the planet, and that is something we can do. Down here on on Agnea at the moment, we are already producing sulfur on mass from um, from petroleum gas over here, and that was for the old systems uh, along here. You can see it was fed it fed through this one, and then the belt comes across to here. It did go through this one, which I've been ripping up, and it could be fed into this one over here as well. So I think we might need to abandon the idea of bringing the sulfur over here and just do it all on site because. Straight up, we just, it's just, we just can't bring it, enough of it over in the spaceships unless we start running the spaceships back only half full of, um, of Vulcanite. So, yeah, that's a, little bit, that's a bit of a problem that I wasn't really expecting. And I have a horrible feeling that we're going to see the same sort of thing with the, um, with the Beryllium as well. But I shall work the numbers out on that one later once, I've, um, once, once I start looking at that and thinking about it again. Oh, of course, actually, there is, there is one more thing on our side here. And that is that we have a 16% productivity boost there and a 40% productivity boost there. And so that might bring us slightly closer to having a bit, uh, having uh, filling the spaceship up. It's still not going to be enough because, as I said, we produce about three eighths of a spaceship from a, a full spaceship of uh, the of, of, of sulfur. But I'll put the numbers up on screen here to show you show you exactly where we would get to, and uh, and a little bit of the extra space will be filled up with stone, sure, but not that much of it. What's going on at the moment is a bit of an unusual aberration because over here somewhere yes over here we have these massive warehouses with enormous quantities of stone in them and this was this was all dug up earlier when we were uh, when we were building the when we were building the facilities because this is a volcanic planet there's rocks absolutely everywhere so as I was building all of this stuff we were digging up huge quantities of, of um, stone and, and and a certain amount of coal as well and all that's been going into the um, into the warehouses over here and so I've started shipping that down we, well we've always been shipping it down here and previously we were putting it onto this belt which came out of the uh, disposal system up here with the objective of turning it all into sand and then into glass in order to ship it out however I've now said well we've got a spaceship now let's not use these delivery cannons anymore let's just turn this around and pass all of the all of the junk that's coming out of the core processing facility up here and all of the excess stone that we've got we're stockpiling in these warehouses let's pass it down a belt over here okay we'll add in the stone and the sand that's being produced by the uh, vulcanite processing just dump it all down this all down this belt all the way down here and down here and put it into the warehouse to be loaded into the in, into the train that goes up to the spaceship so that's why there is so much stone and other miscellaneous junk in the spaceship at the moment it's because we're trying to empty some some buffers that we had before normally We'll have it'll, there'll be slightly more vulcanite in there, hopefully, as long as we don't run out of sulfur. But at the moment, we're just trying to get rid of some some junk. Now, it has occurred to me that this belt down here is never completely full. Of this one, this belt here that's supposed to take the vulcanite away is never completely full, even when there's um, vulcanite being produced as fast as it can be. So we might as well get rid of the excess stone and the excess sand down the same belt as well, and just you know, just see if it can keep up. And I think it probably will be able to. And then that'll save me a load of belt, a load of blue belts that I can then use for the next um, the next processing facility. 
The sulfur, I... The sulfur and the ice are being unloaded down here, as you can see. I honestly don't know what I'm going to do about the sulfur. I think it is going to just have to be made on this planet, but we'll, we'll, we'll deal with that. That's not a problem. But the ice can be brought over. The ice was being brought in previously by delivery cannon, so having that now brought in by spaceship is, is, is a massive improvement. So for the future, the next step is going to be building another two, maybe another three copies of this. And they'll all fit in along here, one here, one here, and then probably one here once I remove this old facility. We then need I then need to think about prioritizing the output from here because or from the, all of these because these are the these pulverizers are are turning are turning the core fragments into um, into vulcanite and so I'd like to use those at a higher priority and at the moment I'm really really not because they're being fed over here into this into these belts that we're just not simply straight up not using because I've ripped this system up or I'm in the process of ripping the system up so it's a sort of a, a gradual process. We'll we'll get there eventually, but we will bring everything up to the more modern designs. But I still want to carry on using these. I also want to pull out some of the um, delivery cannons down here as they get as they get sort of replaced and, and, and rendered unnecessary. At the moment, it's it's still a little bit of an in between sort of system where we're uh, we're not shipping out all the vulcanite that Mike needs over on Kothar, uh, but. Uh, because we're shipping it all to Norvis Orbit, which is a little bit silly. I need to sort of adjust the priorities down here, and I need to remove all of these delivery cannons and basically just tidy, tidy the place up a bit and organise things a bit. So it's, it's, we're working in a slightly more, slightly more modern way, getting rid of all the bits and pieces that we don't need. So we've got all of that going into the train here, that then goes into the spaceship here, then travels over to Norvis Orbit, where the, where the spaceship will land here. You can see one of the arrowhead-shaped, or the arrow-shaped ships can drop in there. Nice dark shape. Uh, and then we can un we can unload it. So here you, you can see that we're trying to load this spaceship up with um, with the sulfur and the ice and the cables and all the other all the other good stuff that, um, that that's, that's needed at the other end. The cables and the ba and the train batteries are being pulled out in Norvis Orbit. I don't know if you noticed that, but then they're being put in, put to, sent to where they're needed. And then we can dump out all of that stuff, which is at the moment mostly going to be stone, admittedly. It's gonna, all going to come out here. Got a filtration system here that's going to send all of the actual vulcanite up into this station so it can be taken away by a train to where it's needed. And then the junk is going to be coming out here. So we've got, um, hmm, this this one is going to be unloading, this this one will take out all the destroyed power packs for trains to go out, to go out, dumped on the recycle belt and be taken away to be recycled. And then all of the stone and coal, iron ore and coal, whatever else, is going to then pour out of these filters. And we've got the standard minus 10 million thing on here to make sure these only pass out what should be taken out. And that'll get put into a, a junk train over here. And there's been some minor changes made to the junk tr junk train. The to the junk trains by Tristan, uh, but I'll, I'll talk about that a little bit more in a, in a moment. But for now, he's set it up so that it will deal with the sand, and he's also set up some trains to bring up the resources, the uh, the ice and the sulphur that are needed up here. So let's take a bit of more of a look at what Tristan's been doing with those trains. There is a mixed train that comes up here from uh, Norvis and then drops off all the resources that are required by by spaceships in medium quantities or smaller quantities. So as you can see, we've got um, ice. We've got in theory, we've got sulfur, although we've run out of it. We've got uh, air filters. We're supposed to have meteor defense ammunition. We're supposed to have cables. Uh, these seem to be shortages as well. And um, and we're supposed to have batteries for trains. So these are all in theory will all be being brought over here. The cables are waiting for us to start making them down on Norvis from Holmium, obviously from Holmium cable, heavy gear to air airframe poles and coal. Because if we do this down on Norvis, I think we're going to be able to productivity module it quite heavily. And because these are fairly expensive and we're going to get through a lot of them, we'd like to build them in huge numbers down on the planet where we can prod mod them and get the benefits of, of, the, um, of, of that boost. There is a, an alternative recipe, but that is still way out of our reach. As you can see, it takes it takes uh, it produces a lot of cable, but we haven't got nano materials yet. I don't think we've got superconductive cables yet, so there's still quite a long way to go before we're ready with that. Oh, and here we go. The train has now delivered a huge amount of sulfur that will all be probably be poured into the um, the Talos and um, uh, Agnea uh, spaceships because they're the ones that ask for. Actually, no, we, it looks like um, Talos has enough sulfur already. Uh, this is all just getting pa passed over there. We've got some vulcanite coming in as well. That's interesting. Uh, that, that, I mean, this is what I'm saying about being being a bit silly. We're getting vulcanite delivered by delivery cannon here when in theory there's going to be a spaceship dropping in, in here with huge amounts of it. But anyway, let's not fuss too much about that. And, oh, there's a little dribble of um, meteor defense ammunition coming out. That is a pathetic amount of it. I guess it just got, the train just got filled up with sulfur and there wasn't, weren't, there wasn't enough of those available. But anyway, this train is, Tristan has set up this train to bring up all the things that are needed for the spaceships to, to be, uh, to be, dragging out all, all the way out to the other planets but as, as I say the sulfur just straight up isn't going to work I don't think on the other side where all the junk is being brought out 
you'll see there are a number of trains. Now, these are all the trains that shuttle up and down between uh, between Norvis and Norbit, uh, bringing whatever stuff. So, um, in in this case, we've got the one that brings up all the uh, the red circuits for the data cars, and it's sitting there, presumably still unloading. Once it unloads, it'll then go to downstream top, which is one of these. So there's one there, uh, which will activate and deactivate depending on how, whether there's enough stuff in the in the in the warehouse here. And at the moment, there's only 16 stacks in it. So this station is probably yes. This station is currently de inactive. There is another downstream top station over here, and these these are, these are all inactive as well. So a train, when it's going down, will try to go to any of those, and if, if 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 necessary. But if it doesn't need to go to any of them, it'll go straight down the the elevator without worrying about it. Alter also, there is a system, I believe, there's this train here called Emergency Downstream. Um, and that one will wait at emergency downstream until there's an emergency signal. And an emergency signal is defined as there being too much stuff in this warehouse. I'm not quite sure exactly what too much stuff means, but it's at the point where we, where the warehouse has got too full. We don't have enough of the normal downstream trains taking the stuff away, so we're going to have to bring in the emergency one to take it away as well. So then that, that then the additional emergency train will rattle from here, it, and this one just goes up and down, up and down, always taking the stuff away whenever it's whenever it's needed. And so, in theory, this train will never do anything. It'll just sit there because all the other trains will always take all the all the excess stuff up and down with them. In practice, I think we're going to find that when a spaceship arrives, it's going to have, well, particularly the Agnair one, uh, when, while we're still getting through this massive buffer of stone, it's going to turn up with two or three, two, two to two and a half warehouses worth of junk. That'll all get dumped into here. This will immediately be full above what it's supposed to be filled up to. And so we'll get the emergency train out straight away. Um... We do have three empty warehouses here to empty into, so it's only going to be a temporary problem. We'll do, we, the ship will be able to depart again as soon as it's finished unloading, and then we can then work through all of that, all of that stone, while we wait for the ship to go off, get more vulcanite, and come back again. Um, so it's not, it's not going to be a problem as such, but it does mean that whenever a ship arrives, we are going to then have to be using the emergency train. But never mind, I guess. I don't, I don't think it's, I don't think it's a serious problem if we, if to have that train running back and forth as required. The trains then, as you've seen before, will drop all of that stuff they're bringing down onto these belts here, where it gets brought down here and just immediately loaded straight into these trains. These trains then go up to the core processing area. The eagle-eyed among you will have noticed that we're now shipping uh, sand down as well, because one of the byproducts of the vulcanite production is sand. And so that's going to be brought over here and dumped out into this system as well. And that's potentially problematic because this area previously wasn't set up to take sand. So, uh, Tristan has now improved that, so over here, yes, there is also a dump for sand. We'll then bring it over here down uh, this belt, which conveniently drops it straight into the um, into, into the stone processing area over here. So any sand that's brought over from uh, Agnea will just be passed in, in over here, where it can then be made into ac nitric acid for uh, rare metal production, or it can be made into glass, or it can be made into silicon. It's just, this is where all of the sand on Norvis gets used up. So this is going to be a really good place to dump it, and it's extremely convenient that these two areas are so close together. So so um, that's that's very very fortuitous. Uh, we we do have an emergency over uh, emergency system over here. That, so anything that comes down in the train that we can't get rid of through the nice sorting system will be put into this purple chest and taken away. But when you're bringing in stacks and stacks of sand, that's not something you want to have to use because it would just make a horrible horrible mess. While I'm down here on uh, on Norvis, I will briefly mention that um, over here we had, and then you'll, 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 you probably saw this in the last video actually, we just finished doing an extension to the artillery range research, and so all of our massive artillery cannons uh, suddenly started firing, and, and there's there's quite a lot of them around. I can't see any of their uh, coverage areas from here, which is a little bit, oh yes, here's one. I can see, yes, there's a big, now, now, now I'm looking for the right colour, there's a big red circle here, there's a big red circle here. And so we started attacking the uh, the biters out here a bit, and that's not too serious a problem on this planet in particular because it meant the biters started running inwards and attacked the attacked the, the walls, but they were all repulsed by the walls. The problem was we then had bots flying around doing funny things trying to repair the walls. So there was an attack down here, and there was an attack up here somewhere. And so we had bots trying to fly from somewhere up here to somewhere down here, and that meant they were flying across this area, where it turned out, and it turned out there were some worms on these islands. So. Um, Mark has dealt with that in a rather nuclear way, as you can see by the scorch marks. Um, that has suitably got rid of them. <clears throat> we had an interesting moment as well where he's doing some expansion down here in the, in the in the southwest corner. And so he'd pushed the biters back with the nuclear artillery. So we've got a large area across here that's been cleared out of nests at least. Uh, but, the war but the defenses haven't been built yet. 
you can see that um, Mark is taking the uh, the grid pattern very very seriously here with the um, with the rover ports even marching out in their grid across the water. Um, but we had a bit of a problem down here where some biters found their way around and were chewing on things, bits of railway stuff like that. Probably because there'd been an artillery train there at some point, um, and they um, or they were coming for this turret. I'm not and got confused. I'm not quite sure. But there were biters in here, so we ended up just shelling our own air, our own uh, territory. As the um, the whichever th um, maxim of um, highly successful mercenaries says, if you're not if you're not prepared to shell your own position you're not prepared to win and finally for this video i shall tuck it in right at the end here where hopefully nobody's going to notice it because you all or you all, all have um, stopped watching the video earlier when i was uh, talking about vulcanite at extreme length <coughs> I noted that there's also a pyramid out here on Agnea. And so I thought, well, the pyramid on Talos, that was really easy. I just I, I ran in there and lobbed out some um, some biogun, fired off a few nukes, ran ran away when my shield started to get low, went in again and cleared it out, and it was actually really quite easy. This one, not so much. I think what happened is a number of months ago, I had a look in there to see what it was like um, when I was wo woefully, absolutely woefully un un under-equipped to deal with it. And so I... Um, I poked the nest, as it were, uh, probably let off a couple of nukes, because that's the sort of thing I would tend to do when, when investigating one of these things, and, uh, and then ran away. This meant that the biters in there had been woken up, and that meant they'd been breeding and producing more, and so, when I went in there this time, it was an absolute, absolute chaos. There were biters absolutely everywhere. Um, I got attacked immediately and uh, and was stupid enough not to run away immediately when I saw what sort of attacks were coming in. Um, I then did try to run away. My armor had, my armor had depleted. I got stuck in some goo uh, and then I died rather quickly and that was bad. Um, I did then also try sticking my head in to uh, try and reclaim my corpse and or at least all the stuff that was on my corpse because that was where all my good armor was and things like that. Uh, that went equally badly because obviously I didn't have any armor and therefore was more or less defenseless and so I've basically abandoned that body and decided to call it's, um, call it's non good riddance isn't quite the right word but just that it's now completely un 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 um, unretrievable and to be honest the 15 minutes has probably passed now and so... We're basically we're doomed. We're not, I'm not going to be able to get it back. All all that stuff has been lost, and so I had to make myself a new jetpack. And I put a marker on the map saying "Warning: Many biters," reminding me not to come back here again. Uh, I've also misspelt my name down here because I was probably trying to type on something when I, and, and clicked on it by mistake. Um, and so I'm not sure what we're going to do about this pyramid. I think it's basically going, at some point in the future somebody will have to come along with really really heavy shields and just go in there and tank all the damage. Maybe you slow down capsules, freeze guns and stuff like that to, to deal with the biters. But my previous technique didn't work on this one because it just got a... It, it was just at far too much and things went badly for me. <laughs> so that was unfortunate and I'm not going to be going back in there for a good long time, I can promise you that much. And I think that's probably a good note to end the video on, so thank you very much for watching. Don't forget to come back on Monday when we shall be carrying on with, well, not that pyramid, but I shall be carrying on with the uh, with the vulcanite processing over here and grumbling about sulfur requirements. On Wednesday, we should be play I should be playing XCOM, and as usual, we haven't had last week's stream yet, but the stream the week before, well, it didn't go too well, but that was mostly due that was entirely due to technical difficulties uh, rather than alien difficulties. So um, nobody died. In fact, I don't think anybody even got seriously hurt. But I was only able to do one mission because my internet dropped and I started a little bit late. And it, it, it was Things were difficult. Uh, hopefully things will go a little bit better uh, for, the, for, the, for uh, the stream that you will already have seen. Um, and hopefully they'll go better for next week as well. And of course I'll be back on Friday, Saturday with the update videos as usual. Thanks very much for watching and I'll see you next time. Bye bye.